Hello and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and video tutorial number three on our latest and greatest series all about the levels commands. In the previous tutorial I mentioned how important the histogram is to working with levels and it's so important that we're going to be spending the next two tutorials discussing it. Starting here where we'll look plainly at understanding it and then in the next video we'll look more into how to read the information that's presented to us inside the histogram. Okay, I'm going to backstep just a few paces here. I'm assuming that you've all got images you're wanting to work on throughout and following the series. And you may have noticed that in both the previous videos, I've already made reference a couple of times to a couple of terms, one of which is the word composite, and the other being channel by channel. You may have heard me say on a channel by channel basis. And before we attack the histogram, I want to make sure that we're all on the same wavelengths when it comes to color here inside of Photoshop. Because ultimately, when we work with levels, we're going to be working inside the individual color channels. And things will seem a lot easier if we know the principles behind color here inside the RGB color space and Photoshop in general. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this image called RGB Illumination which I downloaded from Wikipedia in case you're interested and this image comes free from any copyright restrictions so I'll see if I can make it available for download on the website now if I come up here to the image menu and select mode you'll notice that we have the RGB color mode active if you're taking photographs on a digital camera or scanning in a printed image or even downloading from the web like I did with this particular image it's almost a certainty that you'll be working inside the RGB color mode too. The RGB color mode is based on light, just in case you're wondering. And if you did the old prism experiment at school, you'll be familiar with the concept. But another great way of learning is to look at this RGB illumination image. What we've got here is three spotlights being shone onto a wall. A red spotlight, a green spotlight and a blue spotlight. And those three colors are the three primary colors inside the RGB color space. Where no light is being shone onto the wall, the wall is black because there is no light. Where the green is shining, we have green light. Where the blue is shining, we have blue light. And where the red is shining, we have red light. To produce more colors, we simply mix these three primary colors together. So green and blue make cyan, blue and red makes magenta, and red and green makes yellow. Where red, green and blue light shines at full intensity at the same location, we get pure white. Now inside an 8-bit per channel RGB color space, such as the one we're working in, we can vary the intensity of the red, green and blue light by 256 different values, or 256 different levels, if you like. So if we take the red spotlight and turn it off, the brightness value would be 0. If we turned it on as bright as we could, then the value would be 255. The values in between represent the other levels of intensity. Now even though I mentioned bit depth, I'm not going to go into it here in this tutorial. Suffice to say that if you want to ensure you're working inside the same bit depth as I am, then come up here once again to the image menu, select mode, and just make sure that 8 bits per channel is the active option. We'll be looking a little more at bit depth later on in this series. Okay, I'm going to come over here to the layers palette and hit the channels tab to reveal the three channels inside this image. And true to my word, we have a red, a green and a blue channel which represents their respective colors. The trouble is, instead of seeing the colors, we get these grayscale previews. If you want to see them in color, then you can hit Ctrl K here on the PC or Command K on the Mac to bring up the Preferences dialog box, then select Interface and from there choose Show Channels in Color. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to accept the changes and now we're seeing the channels exactly as we should. So black would represent no color in that particular channel and then from there, the more vivid the color, the more the color is present. The downside to working this way is that the color previews don't respond as accurately to the eye as the grayscale previews. Each to everyone's own though, so if you find this to be more helpful then so be it. I'd recommend though that you hit Ctrl or Command K and switch that option off. 
Now we're seeing no colour represented by black, pure colour represented by white, and 254 degrees of grey representing the intensity of light in between. So basically the darker the channel, the more intense the colour is. So we have three independent channels of colour here, and then one composite view of the three channels added together. And the composite view makes up the image we see on screen. OK, I'm going to turn my attention to the histogram now. And you can see that we have a histogram over here in the palette cluster. And whilst we can see the shape of the histogram, we're not getting the kind of information from here that the histogram inside levels provides. We can switch it to an expanded view, but the values there aren't going to be too useful just yet. Instead, we're going to use the histogram inside levels. Before I open that, however, I'm going to go ahead and minimize the RGB illumination image and then maximize this black to white image. And all I've done here is added a black to white gradient across the image. So we've got black over here on the left and a steady transition of brightness values running into pure white over here on the right hand side. All in all, we have our 256 brightness values contained inside this image being shown as black, white, and then 254 different values of grey. OK, I'm going to come up here to the image menu now and select adjustments and then choose the levels command. And what we're going to be focusing on here at long last, I hear you say, is the histogram. Now I've heard this called a brightness graph before, but here in Photoshop it's called a histogram. And you may have seen something like this on the preview window of your digital camera. And what the histogram is actually showing us is how brightness levels are distributed inside the image. It's not showing us whereabouts in the image those brightness values are located. It's just showing us the distribution of them. The first thing to say is that if you're using an older version of Photoshop, then these input values will be above the histogram instead of below it. They still do exactly the same thing. They're just in a different location. And I've got to say that the location here in CS3 does make a lot more sense because they're adjacent to the sliders they control. Another helpful feature is that the histogram is exactly 256 pixels wide. And if you remember from our look at colours earlier on in this video, you'll remember that each channel, as well as the composite, has 256 different brightness values, or different levels of brightness, I guess you could call it, now we're inside the levels dialog box. So each pixel of the histogram space represents one brightness value, starting at the brightness value of 0, which is black over here on the left hand side, and ending at a brightness value of 255, which is white over here on the right hand side. So if we look at the image, we have an abundance of black in this area, and that's reflected in the histogram by the high peaks over here above the black point. Then the gradient fill fades away from black into neutral grey, and once again, the histogram illustrates that by showing that the distribution of brightness values seems to reduce from black, which we've got loads of, to mid-tone grey. And here in the middle of the histogram, we have the mid-tone marker, which will indicate the amount of pixels inside the image that have brightness values of exactly 128. And then the same happens the other side of the histogram. We have loads of whites on the right. And once again, the histogram reflects this by showing a high peak on the white point. Now, these sliders are actually called the black point slider, the white point slider. And this value in the middle here is called the gamma value. And that's the slider that controls the midtones inside the image. The gamma value, by the way, is measured as an exponent, which means that it's measured as a power of itself instead of a specific brightness value. Very confusing, but We'll be using it a little later on in the training, so we'll find out more about the gamma value a little later on. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this image and then maximize the next one called Black Star. And I'm going to hit Control L here on the PC or Command L on the Mac to open up the Levels dialog box using the shortcut. And that shortcut we'll be using quite a lot here inside the Levels series to save us going up to the Adjustments submenu. And this time we should be able to predict what we're going to see. The histogram is saying that we have a mass of white in this image because we have such a tall peak. It's then telling us that we have a small amount of light greys, an even smaller amount of dark greys, and practically nothing in the image is black, which is a very accurate reflection of this image. So if we look at the image, we've got masses of white, a few light greys, even fewer dark greys, 
and then probably something that measures pure black right here in the middle. So we can surmise from the histogram that the blacks in the centre that actually look like pure solid black are actually a really dark grey. And I can double check that by opening the info palette and I'd like you to keep an eye on these RGB values here keeping in mind that we need a value of zero in each of the three colour channels to achieve pure black. I'm going to hover the eyedropper tool above this little black shape in the middle here and true to the histogram's words the pixels that look black are in fact just a really dark grey. You can see that the brightness values here in the info palette are pretty low but they're not zero in each channel unless we clip right in the middle here. Okay finally I just want to show you that we can remap brightness values here inside levels by moving the sliders around. I'm going to move the black slider up to an input value of say 50 brightness levels meaning that every pixel in the image that had a brightness level of 50 or below is now black. I can also do the same with the white. I can reduce the white point to 205 meaning that any pixel in the image that previously had a brightness value of 205 or above has now been transformed to pure white. So we're actually making the dark greys black and the light greys white. Okay, loads to think about, but we're only halfway there. We've still got plenty of work to do here inside the histogram and indeed inside levels. In the next video, we'll check out some more practical uses for the histogram as we bring into play some real photographs. We're going to be focusing more on how to read the histogram on a composite and channel by channel basis. We'll also be looking at some of the crucial terms we need to get to grips with inside levels, terms like shadows, midtones, and highlights. Well, thanks for joining me here at freephotoshop.com. I'll see you in the next video.